So in the last couple of years, we've actually written uh, several stories on um, counterfeit, electronic, counterfeit electronic products and how they have really had an effect uh, or having an effect, potential catastrophic effect in uh, aerospace in particular right. in, in military. And we're going to have a couple people on the show with us uh, to talk about this. First, we're going to have uh, Stan Salat. Stan, actually, why don't you give us your, your title? You're better at saying <laughs> it than I am. It's very long. <laughs> I can truncate it. It's the International Electrotechnical Commission for Quality Management of Components, Electronic Components. Okay. And you guys are responsible for, for what? We're responsible for the USNC, the United States National Council, which oversees the International Electrotechnical Commission activities here in the U.S. Okay. And also we're going to have on the show with us uh, via Skype is Todd Kramer with Secure Components. Hi, Todd. Oh, I think we're missing the audio there and Todd. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, we hear you, Todd. Uh, so Secure Components is one of the first companies to be registered to a new, uh, to a new standard, the AS6081, uh, which is a counterfeit, uh, counterfeit, electronic counterfeit component uh, mitigation uh, standard, I guess right. is what, is what right. we could call it. Okay. Oh, well, before we get into it, um, before we get back to Todd here, uh, as we said, Secure Components is the first company to be registered to AS6081. Uh, some of our uh, readers had a question regarding an article that ran this week that was authored by, uh, authored by yourself um, that dealt with uh, uh, counterfeit components and they said why are we even buying components from Asia or overseas? Why don't we just buy from reputable electronics components distributors and, and vendors right here in the United States? And there's kind of a bigger issue going on here. Why don't you kind of explain what the problem is? Uh, thank you, Dirk. And that's a very good question. The reality is 80% of electronic components come from Asia. And further to that, uh, we are dealing, particularly in the military avionics world, we're dealing with a lot of older components that aren't really manufactured anymore. They're called obsolete, obsolete parts. And the only place to find them is, generally speaking, outside the U.S. now. So we're really scrambling to find older technology, which is the bigger issue here. New technology we buy from new sources. It, sure. It's new, it's right out of the factory, it's not as much of an issue. And, and I, if, if I understand the problem correctly is you might have a, a, uh, a military uh, contractor working on some sort of piece of obsolete electronics. It, he needs to order some components that are no longer manufactured even or even the company that manufactured may not be in existence right. anymore right. and but they still have to be that is the part that spec that is the part that has to be put in right that's correct each part is uniquely approved by the FAA and the system itself so they so can't just swap in you, a, a, an equivalent right. part, so to speak. you can't okay. go get a uh, a Kemet capacitor to replace a uh, uh, Viché capacitor. It has right. to be the one that's been approved. Okay, and, and that's, that's kind of the issue is finding those obsolete po uh, uh, parts. So Todd, let's come back to you. Um, tell us a little, little bit about who, secure, wh who and what Secure Components is. Sure. Uh, secure Components is an independent distributor. We are certified to the AS9120 and the AS6081 standard. And our job is to procure components for the Department of Defense, the De uh, Defense Logistics Agencies, and aerospace companies when their procurement teams uh, can't find the parts through franchise or through their uh, original component manufacturer. We're basically there to backstop their supply chain. Okay. So as a small, uh, and it's a compo Secure Components is a relatively small company, I, I believe, right? And we're a small business, that's okay. right. Uh, what, what drove you to undertake being the first company in the world to seek uh, the International IECQ Counterfeit Avoidance Certification, that's the AS6081? Right. Well, um, you know, strictly speaking, it, it came out of survival. I mean, our sales team was competing with other independent distributors and other brokers who held lower standards in in terms of their quality management systems. You know, looking up a part on Google or finding the part in the world is the easy part. Authenticating the part, making sure it's legitimate and what your customer needs is a whole nother story. 
if buyers continually just look at price as being the ultimate factor, it's a sure bet. It's only a matter of time before a counterfeit component enters into the supply chain. So we went after the AS6081 to basically level the playing field for all independent distributors and brokers. Uh, and Stan, have, have counterfeit components actually entered the supply chain? And has the military actually spotted, hopefully in time, uh, counterfeit components <laughs> before they've been installed in, in aircraft or radar or, or anything like that? Has, is this like uh, the sky is falling kind of thing or is this an actual thing that has almost happened? Um, again, a very, very good question, uh, Dirk. The reality is that parts have been found, counterfeit parts have been found in products. If you read some of the articles that are written, there's uh, evidence of parts falling out of IC sockets that were in fact counterfeit as they were identified. So this is not a myth, it's not a story, it's real. Uh, it's real to the tune of about six billion dollars in the military per year and uh, Todd can correct me on this but I believe that it, we're talking about roughly a million parts and I forget the time frame that the the US military has identified in their supply chain okay um, uh, Todd I mean uh, kind of to follow up on on what what Stan said here, uh, there have been stories, I've seen them, uh, maybe some of our viewers have on CNN, let's say Fox News, reporting on uh, the growing concerns of counterfeit parts and products in, in the military supply chain, just as, as Stan said here. Um, can you give an, a, our audience an example of how this has affected, uh, has, has affected your company, or maybe your clients, for that matter? Sure, sure. Um, absolutely, there's been a tremendous impact to our company. You know, as an independent distributor, we play a very vital role in uh, sustaining and maintaining legacy applications, especially, as you mentioned, they are using a lot of obsolete components. And franchise distribution cannot supply our customer base with obsolete components. So we sought AS6081 uh, to prove to our customer base that we really were a trustworthy supplier for them and that they can come to us in times where they can't get their parts from franchise. And, and can you give us an example of, of through what you guys do, you have found uh, uh, parts that were, that were counterfeit? I mean, have you actually spotted this in your own procurements? Yes, as a, as a matter of fact, uh, Secure Components has been uh, really looking at this inspection techniques and finding better practices for many, many years. But um, just recently, uh, we had a capacitor that was being procured by a defense contractor. Um, it was supposed to be a Vache capacitor, and in fact, uh, due to our qu uh, strict quality codes and, and inspection techniques, uh, when the parts were finally procured and brought into Secure Components, immediately our con uh, quality engineer, quality control, saw the anomalies with the markings. And upon further research, we contacted Viché, and they, in fact, uh, confirmed that we uh, intercepted a counterfeit component. And I'm, I'm glad to say that we did that before uh, we shipped the parts to the end user. And, and, and Stan, is this part of what the assessment process, the assessment to AS6081 uh, does? Is it looking at companies like, let's say, secure components? and making sure that they have, what, the ability to test or follow a paper trail? I mean, what exactly are you guys looking for? We're, we're looking for the ability, the systems in place to uh, first qualify the supply chain uh, where you can authenticate the parts as you receive them. So maybe you can't authenticate the supplier that you're buying from. And with, the, with today's technology and internet buying and selling, Reality is that parts are bought and sold and transferred and they might go straight from a source in India to, uh, to a secure component. So we have to have a, a place where that's brought to light. 6081 says thou shall do a number of steps. There's actually a set of tests, there's a set of inspections, there's uh, mechanical inspections, visual inspections, decap inspections. Um, it's very rigorous. Okay. And the assessment process validates, just like with ISO 9000 or AS9100 or 9120, 
it validates that the company actually has those systems in place. Okay, and, and uh, Todd, uh, obviously you guys went through this, this whole process of being assessed. Um, what did you learn through the experience of going through that? Well, uh, first and foremost, I was really pleased to see that our management team um, and the intuition that we had was dead on. It took us so many late nights, a ton of will to get through uh, this kind of process because our industry and our customers, frankly, weren't even asking for it. It was something that we were doing up front. But looking back now with the adoption of the Department of Defense um, adopting the 6081 and all the phone calls and the emails that we are receiving, from the rest of industry, I, I really think that we're on the right path and we're excited to see um, more independent distributors and brokers uh, accept this and take this certification into their own uh, organizations. And, and what, about from the, what about from the assessor's point of view? Uh, from the assessor's point of view, I think Todd's understating a, a piece of this. When he says long nights, he was preparing for an assessment that had uh, the American National Accreditation Body involvement it had the International Electrotechnical Commission involvement, it had industry involvement. As it, as it came together, there were four witness assessors, one assessor, and Todd's company. Um, from our standpoint, it validated what was good in the standard, what was needing additional work, and SAE is actually the standards creator, so we identified things there all of that was able to go back to the committee, G19 from SAE. It also identified um, some of the weaknesses in the assessors because in many cases you're not really looking at physical ma material because it comes and goes. You're talking quantities here of one or two, right. two hundreds, or even a few thousand. So it, it's a very different assessment from a, a standard quality management system. Right. It was a real learning. Okay, well, well Todd, uh, Stan, we're, we're about out of time here, but uh, Todd, congratulations on being the, the, the first company, Secure Components, to uh, achieve AS6081 uh, certification. Great job, man. Appreciate it. We're re quite proud, and uh, it gives us pleasure to be able to lead, uh, lead the industry and have everyone else uh, look at us and, and follow suit. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Todd. And Stan, thank you also for, thank you. for, for joining us here. Um, Pleasure. And uh, safe travels back to uh, Eugene. Thank you very much. All right.